Hello, I'm Richard Van Wyke with ev for You Custom Conversions. And as promised, we're going to do a, a quick little video on uh, the batteries that we're using on our um, Carmen Ghia project. We last showed you the uh, motor, adapter, coupler, flywheel, and clutch assembly. And so today we're going to give you a little overview of the batteries. Uh, the batteries that we use on this project or in, and on others um, are a lithium iron manganese phosphate cell. Uh, they're made by GBS and uh, available uh, through Elite Power Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we like these cells a lot and I'll show you why in a little bit. But uh, first, I want to talk about uh, charging and discharging of your batteries, um, what you need to know, and we're not going in, in depth, um, but just give you an overview. So first off, we're going to talk about bottom balancing and, and why I believe you should bottom balance them. You know, when the batteries come in, we always uh, take a voltage reading on them and uh, they all read the same within uh, a tenth of a volt. Um, typically the GBS's are all dead on and uh, so not much variation there but what we don't know without doing a capacity check is that each one of them has a slightly different capacity. Uh, just like people not all cells are, are exactly the same. So, in order to uh, protect ourselves because of this varying capacity, uh, we'll bottom balance. What happens is, if you have a cell, and hopefully this shows up on the camera, uh, I'm showing this green line here, and that's showing that each one of these cells has a slightly different capacity. Uh, the cells that we typically use are 100 amp per hour cells and so some of them might have 110, some might have 98, some might have 97, some may be 105. We don't know that and we're really not super concerned with that because what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a base reference point. So let's look at the uh, discharge curve here first. Here's uh, 3.7 volts. Here's 3.3. You can see that is really steep right there. So basically between 3.3 volts and 3 volts, we have a very flat discharge curve. That's one of the nice things about a lithium battery. Uh, you don't have a lot of voltage drop uh, through that discharge cycle. So you have a vehicle that, that has a uh, nice driving uh, feel to it versus lead acid which has a uh, quite a sloping uh, discharge curve and so if you're pulling the same amount of power out of that pack as the voltage drops the current's going to rise and it kind of escalates that, that uh, discharge. With this nice flat discharge curve, we have the same pedal feel, same feel on the throttle when the pack is first charged as it is when we get towards the end. Just a better uh, feeling uh, in the drivability sense. So anyway, uh, you can see that you know, as you're discharging, you're going to get down here where, you know, 2.9 volts, we're really heading over the, the cliff now. And, uh, and between 2.9 and, and 2.8, which is where uh, the uh, energy management system uh, that we use with these is designed to cut off, happens pretty quickly. So, we don't want to have... A, a cell like this one, which has less capacity, 
that as we are drawing the same amount of capacity out of all the cells, since it's a series setup, as we draw that down, all of a sudden this one's going to reach no man's land first, and it's going to dive off that cliff. And we, that's, a, that's a scenario you don't want to happen. So what we do before we install them is we drop them all down to 2.75 volts, which is below the shutoff point on our EMS. So at 2.75, this is the baseline then. They all have a common baseline. Then, we connect them in series, and we charge them as a pack, and we bring them all up to the same capacity. It may not be the maximum capacity that they all would have, but it's the maximum capacity of the least. And that then, uh, when we're on our discharge portion of our battery use, we're going to reach this point at the same time, which is desired. If we uh, balance them at the top, because some of them have uh, you know, more capacity than others, now they're all balanced at the maximum capacity of the individual cells, but the cell with the least capacity will be the first one to discharge. The others may be fine. You may have one that's you know, um, you know substantial percentage less than the others it's going to fall off the edge. Again, scenario you don't want to happen. So anyway, that's in a nutshell the reason for bottom balancing and uh, bringing them all up together uniformly. We don't care that there's a little bit of difference in capacity in those cells at that point. We just want to make sure they have the same capacity when we get down to the bottom. So that when we have 20% of our pack left, they all have 20% left, or that level of 20% is the same there. So, let's give you a, a few uh, few bits of information here um, on these uh, cells. They come in a four pack, which I'm going to have to move the camera to show you, but um, they come banded four cells to a pack which I then call a battery. And just like your lead acid, you know, a 12 volt battery has six cells in it. It's all in one case. But there's actually six cells. And those six cells, when fully charged, have 13.2 volts. A wet cell is 2.2 volts when fully charged. You won't typically measure 13.2 volts because of the internal resistance. At rest, they'll typically run 13 volts. This four pack uh, nominal voltage is 13.2 volts. Pretty much replicates what you have with a uh, uh, blood acid battery. Um, the dimensions, they're five inches wide, 11 and a quarter inches long, and nine and five eighths inches tall. And that four pack weighs 28.2 pounds. The lead acid batteries that we used to use and on occasion still do, um, they're 130 amper hour cells uh, and they weigh 66 pounds apiece. So substantially lighter. Uh, a 12 battery pack, 156 volt pack, lead acid, weighs in at 792 pounds. This will weigh in at 312 pounds if I remember correctly. So anyway, a little overview there. Let's, uh, we, we briefly talked about the uh, discharge curve here. Um, the EMS that we use has certain parameters designed into it. One of them is that when any cell reaches 3.7 volts and that condition exists for 30 seconds, the battery charger will shut off. So the cell with the least capacity will reach that point first and shut off, thus protecting that cell and the rest of the pack from overcharging. My battery's getting low, so we're going to have to make this quick. <laughs> um, 
the uh, voltage when we receive them typically is about 3.3 .3 volts, 3.29. Um, and then uh, the shutoff point with EMS is 2.8 volts. If any cell reaches 2.8 volts and uh, that condition exists for 30 seconds, EMS is designed to, to allow you to you know, shut, shut the, the controller off or cut back the power, whatever, it, it will operate a relay that will allow you to do whatever you want to do with that. And so, uh, on the display, it will show minimum cell voltage, maximum cell voltage, so whatever the cell that has the least voltage, it will show that, maximum voltage, maximum cell temperature, so whatever the, the hottest cell is that temperature will be shown. It shows you the state of charge, the pack voltage, and the current, whether it be charging or discharging. It shows it a positive or a negative. Um, and then when you get below 80% uh, depth of discharge, uh, things start showing up in red as a warning that your pack is at that point where you better be close to home. So that's kind of it in an overview. So let's, uh, let's take a close-up look at, at uh, the batteries. Okay, here we are with our uh, cells. You can see they're banded together. Rigid piece on, on either end. And then four straps down the length. Very secure. They have little pins in them so they interlock together very nicely. They come in a four pack like this, banded together with lifting uh, straps. They um, are already interconnected as far as the four cells. You can then tie out the side, out the end. Um, they come with extra straps uh, two different lengths so that you can either go uh, out the end or out the side. Um, and then when need be we make our own uh, copper straps. Um, this is about, uh, one of the things I like about these is this, this square mounting pad. Gives you a lot of surface area. It's about seven eighths of an inch square and there's four screws with uh, lock washers that uh, hold things secure. So never have a problem with anything loosening up. Um, very nice setup. Other thing I like about them is that uh, the sense boards uh, fit on here nicely and they then are covered. They fit underneath these covers which uh, protects them from any problems. We had a, a customer drop a screw on one one time. He had the covers off. He was doing something and he dropped a screw on, on a sense board and uh, shorted it out. We were able to fix it and, uh, and did so rather quickly. And so he, uh, he was in good shape there. But having the cover prevents, uh, you know, unforeseen issues. And so I like it. It gives a nice clean look, protects your your EMS sense boards, and uh, it's a nice package. Um, you can go to uh, Elite, Power Solution, Elite Power Solutions website and they will give you more information regarding the GBS cells. Um, I like them and they're really, at, at this point in the game, uh, this is May 2012, there's really only two that are readily available in my mind and that's the Calv cells, China Aviation Lithium Battery Company and uh, the GBS cells. Um, so I, I've seen videos on these where they take a rod and, and just uh, drive a rod completely through the center of one of these. Um, I heard of a gentleman that actually uh, left one of these on a charger, uh, 
not the charger that comes for these, but another charger. He was doing some capacity chat tests and uh, completely left it on the charger uh, overnight, totally forgot about it, and completely melted one down. No fire, no explosion, just an extremely durable and reliable cell. We've never had uh, a failure to date. And um, we had a customer uh, completely discharge these uh, down to, well, maybe it's not complete, but down to 0.7 volts per cell. We then uh, bottom balanced them uh, individually and then brought them up as a pack and they uh, continue on. So, you know, they're pretty rugged and durable. I just uh, can't say enough good things about them at this point. Uh, be nice someday that this same size package that uh, we had 400 ampere hours uh, per cell instead of 100. But that day's coming. Uh, the other nice thing would be uh, if the price would come down substantially. Um, they're still fairly spendy, still the single most expensive component of a conversion are your batteries. So until we um, pull the engine out of the car Magia and put the electric motor in, I'm Richard Van Wahi for EV for You Custom Conversions. Uh, visit us on the web at um, ev4unow.com and be sure to sign up for our three-day hands-on conversion workshops. Uh, there will be one in July, again in August, September, and October. And we look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions about anything we, we discuss on these uh, uh, videos, you can email us at info at ev4unow.com. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye.